Hey folks, BFG Neil here. Today I'm going to be talking about CO2 monitoring, its effects on your health and how you can use sensors to keep track of it. Carbon dioxide is naturally present in the air we breathe and exhale. However, in indoor spaces it can accumulate in higher levels, especially when poorly ventilated. Sitting in a room for an extended period of time can increase the CO2 levels and that has a range of symptoms from headaches, dizziness, fatigue, impaired concentration and even in more severe cases it can lead to serious respiratory issues. This is why monitoring CO2 levels is crucial, especially with so many of us working from home nowadays. Now let me introduce you to the Mary IT CO2 sensor. This little device is a powerhouse when it comes to monitoring CO2 levels. It features real-time monitoring and sends updates every hour by default. It's perfect for keeping track of CO2 levels and takes temperature and humidity readings too. It's got two user replaceable batteries. Now these are AA size, but note that they are um, slightly higher capacity, so you need to buy these. Just simply put the two batteries in the back and hold down the button. And when you see the flash, that means it's connected. Now these devices use the Helium network. Um, Trackpack uses the Helium network. It's a LoRaWAN device. So there are a lot of hotspots about. Um, this map just shows you where the hotspots are around the world. Now, these provide much more coverage than the area currently shown, and there's gonna be a coverage map soon to be able to show you, but as you can see, most population centers are covered, so you won't need to do anything else to get them set up. Okay, to get started with TrackPack, head over to trackpackpac.io and click the login button top right. You can either continue with one of these accounts or enter your email and password to continue. Once signed up, you'll be logged in. Here I've got an existing account with a few organizations. Organizations allow you to group devices um, together and add members. So I'm gonna add a new one here, Home Office. Once done, I've selected it. And here I can click Add Device. Once I've done that, I wanna enter keys manually. So I just select Trackpack as an LNS, give it a name. into the three keys that came with the device. I then select it from the device type dropdown, Mary IoT, indoor air quality, and select which region I'm in. I then select which organization I want to add it to, and click add device. Once added and it started to uplink, you'll, you'll see this kind of solution. So you can click the card, and once you click the card, you'll see the full readings of it from temperature, humidity, CO2, PPM, now as default, this is 24 hours of data, so you can see trends over the day here. And I also have a full frame history below that lists every single uplink that the device has made. I've had it off this morning, so that's why there's some bad readings here. And then up the top right, I can actually download this as a CSV file. I can also click this date range button to show more statistics. So this is a week, for example. And that's it. Up next, we're gonna set up an alert. So the first thing I need to do is add a contact to the system. This is how you choose to message someone. So I'm just gonna add me here. Um, you get the choice of email, SMS, or both. Here, I'm just gonna pick email and enter my email address. Click add, and that saves me as a contact on this account. I can then go to actions and add an action for the CO2 message. So I'm gonna give my action a name, CO2. Select the action type of alert. And the alert type is CO2 PPM. And I want it above 1500. Enter a message to send once it's hit that level. So this is message is shown at the very start of the alert. And select me as a recipient and what device I want this to attach to. And click add. And that's it. I will now get alerts to my email address um, every time the CO2 PPM passes over that level. So I just wanted to show you some real world data here. Obviously I try to keep um, the window open whenever I get a chance and I obviously look during the day when the levels start getting high. But there have been a couple of times where I've missed it and just look how quickly, you know, this is an hour's difference. Uh, and this is a big period. Um, obviously it happens quite a lot in the evening for us when we cook late. Uh, my office is above um, the cooker and in the kitchen. So the CO2 produced from that absolutely sends it spiraling. And so, what I do is I get an alert then and open a window and it really does help quite fall down quite drastically. 
So just a few tips to help maintain indoor air quality. Uh, proper ventilation, you know, um, when the levels get high, it's always good to open windows. Um, take breaks, you know, go to a better ventilated area, maybe take a walk outside, touch some grass, as they say. Um, you could also consider using air purifiers to help clean the air. Another great one is indoor plants. Indoor plants will absorb that CO2 uh, and, and produce oxygen. So, And of course, you know, regularly monitor this stuff uh, really helps. Um, what I do is with my alarms, every time it goes off, I open a window for a period. I try nowadays to open the window regularly during the day, but this just lets me know when I forget. So in summary, I found monitoring um, CO2 levels at home invaluable. It's really helped with headaches for me. Um, I'm a big migraine sufferer, so monitoring these levels was quite surprising. Another big one you do want to try is your bedroom. Um, you know, especially if you have a partner and you're not sleeping with proper ventilation, you'd be so surprised how quickly the CO2 levels rise. So I definitely recommend CO2 monitoring, and this is a, a really easy, really cool device to do that with. Uh, thanks for watching, and that's it for today. Uh, if you've made it this far, uh, thanks uh, for watching and uh, leave a like and subscribe. Uh, and a bit of bonus footage coming up, uh, one of the main CO2 producers in my room during the day, also snoring in the background of every video I make. So this is clear. Bye for now.